Hey everybody, my name is Samantha Snyder. If you're new to my channel, just a little bit about me. I am a professional musician, primarily a fiddler and vocalist. And I've been doing this on the road for about 15 years and, and playing the fiddle since I was three years old. So that's, that's coming up in 21 years now. It's my passion, it's what makes me happy, and it's what I plan on spending pretty much every day of my life doing from now on. When I first started playing at three years old, I was in the Suzuki violin program, which you might be familiar with. It's a classical program that focuses on training students from a very young age so that their ear is well developed um, and their habits are well developed and um, just in general they have a strong foundation from which to continue on to do whatever they want. After four years of pursuing the classical program and, and rising through the different levels there and playing recitals and things like that and starting to do some duo stuff with my brother who was learning some of the same things on guitar in the Suzuki program, we both fell in love with other genres. We were both big fans of um, kind of all the folk genres, so bluegrass, country, Irish, um, and many, many more. And we decided to pursue that as well and slowly transitioned over into those genres exclusively. I will never forget early on um, in that transition, we had a very good friend um, who was a bluegrass lover and had family that played bluegrass in our community. And he had put together a, a cassette tape of some great bluegrass songs, some of the highlights of, of bluegrass music and had given it to us just sort of to pique our interest. I'll never forget pressing play and Sally Gooden came on and I just, my jaw dropped and my eyeballs bugged out of my head and I looked at my, my mom and we started laughing because it sounded so difficult. It sounded so fast and so impossible to do. I was like, there's no way I'll ever be able to, to reach that level. And years later when I look back on it, it was actually a moderately paced version of the song pretty laid back and it cracks me up what a difference just perspective makes in tackling things that we think are difficult at the time. That leads me into um, my main point for this video and what I wanted to demonstrate which is that music at its core is very logical um, and in a way it's not as complicated as it seems to be. Um, I don't want to overstate that because it is a very difficult discipline and one re that requires a lot of work and a lot of attention and a lot of practice. But um, that work and that attention and that practice involves understanding how to break down the difficult things into more manageable pieces. And that's a very doable exercise for pretty much everything that you're going to tackle as a musician. As an example, I want to show you something that is one of my favorite licks to throw into shows. You'll probably hear me do this at just about every show that I play um, on the road with Darren and Brooke Aldridge or in any other variety of lineups. This is a, a lick that I like to do sort of at the highlight of a break, especially if it's, it's an extended jam, which I'm lucky enough to get to do every now and then. Um, I'm building to a high point and I really want to play something that stands out. Um, and this is what I do. So um, today I'm going to do it um, over the key of E because that's that's where I tend to do it a lot. Um, but it can be it can be transposed to different keys. But it sounds like this. And it just goes on from there. I can extend it as long as I want to with a lot of different combinations of, of, of double stops. Um, this sounds like. A really difficult lick and the notes go by fast and there's a lot of changes and you just um, your brain interprets it as something pretty intense and that's why I save it for the high points in the show it can be broken down into very simple building blocks all this is is sets of three notes um, that we alternate in different ways so I'm going to show you what I mean by that so we start for this particular um, arrangement of the lick with a very simple um, set of three notes so that's what I call one iteration of this pattern that we're going to continue repeating to create the more complex sound. And honestly, the, the lick um, would have a similar effect just if we did this, the, what we just learned over and over again. So if we just go, you can speed that up and it creates that intensity that, that the lick originally um, created. Um, obviously that sounds kind of repetitive and it really doesn't move with chord progressions very well um, or even if the chord progression is staying the same um, it gets kind of boring really quickly. So we want to create some movement within that pattern. So we're going to change from this original set of three. We're going to think about using this as like a backboard. Um, so we're going to rebound off of that first finger on the A. So we're going to switch that first note. We're going to keep the rebound the same and switch the first note 
to a first finger on the E. So now we're just barring and we go like that. So now we have and now we can switch back to our original set of three notes. So you'll notice our rebound is always the same. We're just um, we're just changing that first note in the set of three. But those second two notes of the set of three are always that rebound that stays the same. Um, so now we're going to change it to another note in the E scale. So we're gonna to go to the third finger on the E. So, so it'll sound like. And finally, we'll do a, an, an octave. So it'll be our fourth finger on the E and our rebound staying the same. So, and then I'm gonna walk back down. you can kind of continue to lick as long as you want to. Typically what I'll do, um, depending on how long I want to stretch it out, is so at the end is where I finally drop the pattern. Um, but that, the high part, so we go all the way up to that four, walk it down, and then we'll go back to the second finger, the first finger bar, open E, and then just three one one on the A. And then that's where we come out of the pattern and just land on our second finger on the A. Um, you'll notice my bowing is not doing anything special. It changes bow direction with every note. So I could it just as easily start this pattern with an up bow. I chose to start it with a down, but um, up bow is also fine. It doesn't matter how you start as long as each new note is headed in an opposite direction. Um, and then the key to getting it fast is um, repetition. You keep on doing it, you get familiar with the pattern, you make sure that your muscle memory for both hands is sufficient before you take it to the next level. Um, you can work with a metronome if you like, or just in your head, sort of speed it up. Or if you have a particular song that you're wanting to play it over and it's a recording, you can work towards being able to play it as fast as that song and just kind of inching your way towards that. To be able to handle the speed, um, you want to have a nice loose right hand um, or whatever your, your bowing hand is. You want it to stay loose and what I mean by that is your wrist is going to be doing a lot of the work. It's not going to be the stiff arm where everything's locked up because that means you're moving from the shoulder, you're going to get exhausted and you're not as flexible there. Um, and so all the articulation um, is going to go away and you're just going to be doing this. That's uh, advice for fiddling in general. You always want to keep a loose wrist and that's what you want to do the most work. Of course, there's some elbow involved. Shoulder is not um, actively involved as much. The shoulder just allows you to sort of change where you are um, on the higher or lower strings. But your elbow and your wrist are the main workhorses here. When you play this lick, you want to focus on light bows and a loose wrist. So the faster you play, you'll notice that my, my notes start to get a little bit shorter and a little bit bouncier because I'm allowing that bow to just strike um, with enough pressure that it's not scratchy or, or weak in any way, but it, we want to strike it in an airy way. Slow, I'm playing more intentionally. When it gets faster, let me back up a little bit where you can see um, the full bow length. going you can see I just locked up my wrist and my elbow and it immediately stopped working as well this is elbow and wrist that's all it is and you'll notice I'm really only moving about that much on the bow at this point because if I'm trying to do long bows I run out of time to change quickly enough to play the lick at the speed I want to so if I'm trying to go it, it automatically slows me down. So we're doing short bows. Um, so the that's the key, is you break down the lick into patterns and you make sure that you understand the basics first, the building blocks. If you can count something, if you can find out 
if it breaks into symmetrical pieces and then within those symmetrical pieces how many notes are there per piece um, and then how many times does that repeat that gives you a really good way to sort of analyze your way through something that at first seemed like a big tangled mess this works on a lot of different um, challenges that you're going to encounter as a musician and as a fiddler and really in a lot of other areas of life as well it works on the mathematical side i'm also a math tutor same thing applies over there the more you can break something down into manageable pieces um, the more likely you are to solve something that originally seemed unsolvable. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen me talk about this in the context of the famous lick from New Country, which is um, created by Jean-Luc Ponty, who is a jazz rock fusion um, violinist um, who was creating music in the 70s. He was absolutely brilliant. He's a big inspiration of mine. Um, and in the song New Country, which you can hear done by him as well as Mark O'Connor and Sam Bush, there's this lick that is just, um, it'll floor you because it sounds impossible to do. It sounds physically impossible. Um, and it sounds like this. This was a very daunting task to tackle originally um, until I discovered that it was also broken up into a pretty simple pattern. It's broken up into sets of six is the way I like to view it. Um, so it starts with and then, and then, and then, and then we end on um, an outlier note. So it's really just those sets of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one. Um, and those are, you know, fairly simple sequences within that. And then, straightforward things to play especially when you play them at that speed the trick is to string them all together and be able to play all that up to speed and in tune as well um, I'm still working on it there are the people that play this song professionally such as Sam Bush um, can play it effortlessly um, and play it um, faster than than I have in this video but that's just another example of how something complicated when you analyze it and break it down can be turned into something that is really just a matter of putting the pieces together and then greasing the gears until everything runs as smoothly and quickly as possible and you grease the gears with good technique. Make sure that when you're working on something challenging like this you don't just beat your head up against the wall about it. You have a process, you have a strategy, and then you have a checklist that you go through um, if things aren't working. So if you cannot get the lick and you just keep playing it over and over again and it sucks every time, ask yourself um, am I tightening up because I'm tense and because it's not working? Um, when we are frustrated or when we're really focusing on something, we tend to really lock up our muscles um, and that will affect our technique. So it's kind of, um, we kind of reach a point of diminishing returns when we just continue to play it over and over again without changing anything about our strategy. Try to shake out your arm. Uh, I tell especially my younger students to just stop for a minute and shake out the muscles and sort of reset your brain. Um, and that applies to, <laughs> to students of all ages, not just the young students. Um, and in fact, maybe, maybe us overthinkers as we get older, um, it applies to us even more. Shake out the muscles, um, reset your body and reset your brain a little bit, and then go through your checklist. Am I, am I being loosey goosey with the bow enough? Am I playing short notes? Am I attacking too hard because I'm dialed in? How is my pitch? Is that what's making this sound off? Is that in the, in the speed of things, I'm playing something a little sharper flat? Because sometimes something sounds wrong and you can't even figure out what it is or something's tripping you up and you realize that it's a bowing thing or it's a, the bow direction is throwing you off. Um, it, there are a million little tiny things. Um, it just is a matter of stepping back and running through that checklist in your brain. So check in with your body, check in with your mind, make sure that you're not just blindly throwing yourself at it. Um, that's really important um, in vocal work too and something that I learned um, very well as I was coming out of my, my voice change and, and singing professionally at the same time. Um, as a teenager. So um, it applies to all areas of music as well. So that's my advice and my lesson for the day. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer lessons both online and in person. If you're interested in in-person lessons, um, that can be arranged if you're within um, 30 to 60 miles of me. I'm in Lexington, North Carolina um, for a slightly higher rate if I, if I have to drive to you. Um, but also I offer online lessons and that's on Zoom and Skype and FaceTime and whatever other platform works best for you. I have flexible availability. I like to offer pretty much any day and time possible 
um, to work around people's busy schedules. I'm a touring musician, so I understand um, the, the flexibility is required um, because I require it um, because I travel a lot. I offer lessons in increments of 30, 45, and 60 minute sessions. We can pick whatever works best for you and what you're looking for and what you need as a student. I teach all experience levels from beginner to advanced. Um, I love teaching kids how to play fiddle for the first time and showing them all the things that I learned when I was their age that, that built me into the musician that I am today. Um, but I equally love working with people that are at an intermediate or advanced level and are seeking to improve themselves um, and get out of the plateau they're in or tackle something specific that they've been looking to work on. I also um, can work on arrangements and breaks for people that have a specific goal or specific song that they're getting ready for stage or competition. I love helping people prepare for fiddle competitions as well and for performances. So I do a little bit of everything for everybody and uh, would love to, to have you on board. My contact info is below and uh, we'll get you set up. So contact me using one of the links below. I'm excited to talk to you. I hope you learned something and or enjoyed yourself today um, during this video. Come back to my channel for a variety of content. I do videos like these. I record new music. Um, I vlog occasionally um, about my life as a musician and as a, a hobby farmer. <laughs> I have also written a novel called The Map of Griffin Green, and I'm currently um, recording an audiobook for it that I am offering for free here on YouTube. So there is lots of good content here, primarily music, but some other fun stuff as well. So um, subscribe if you're interested. Thanks so much and take care.